Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel Pastime Shows. Drama unfolds in days of our lives, explosive secrets, near kisses, and crime sprees. This week on Days of Our Lives is packed with jaw-dropping moments. Xander reels from shocking news just as Eric Martzolf teases a wild attack scene that could change everything. Meanwhile, a close call nearly leads Abigail to kiss Chad, leaving fans on the edge of their seats. As Fiona's secrets unravel and Connie's crime spree comes to a thrilling end, the suspense heightens, especially as Connie grows increasingly paranoid about Rafe's returning memories. And don't miss Fabi's emotional regrets as they grapple with choices on September 16th. Astonishing news for Xander, plus Abigail almost kisses Chad. The walls enclose Abigail, Xander hears a disturbing sound, and Alex shows Stephanie his favorite teddy bear today on Days of Our Lives. Steve tells a much happier Kayla that he can't stop thinking about a Abigail as he sits at the pub enjoying his burger. Interestingly, the young lady in question is on the phone at the DeMera mansion at that very moment, warning Mark that Steve won't be as easy to fool as everyone else. It's important to note that since this is days of our lives, she is having this chat in the midst of the living room with the doors wide open for everyone to hear. And then, to her surprise, Chad enters and calls her name so she can continue her fictitious conversation with Abigail. She abruptly hangs up, saying she was getting sushi. Chad says, I heard you say you were freaking out, to which Sarah swiftly replies that she has misplaced the location. Honey, this is Salem. Just say, the Demera Mansion. Almost everyone in the community has been imprisoned there at some point. She tells him a few more small lies, all of which he believes because of her delusional justification. Abigail updates Chad about her talk with Steve. I'm shocked he didn't come by sooner, so he could see you with his own two eyes, Chad remarks. Concerning that it was rude, Abigail jokes, his own one eye. Chad gives her a high five and says Steve would have liked that. She asks whether he feels the same way, and he tries to explain why people might be skeptical since everything seems too good to be true. He says, I feel like this is the miracle that I prayed for every single night since you left me, emphasizing how much he and many others adore her. Chad claims he stopped by to show her their wedding album in an attempt to trigger a recollection. She is shocked to learn that they were married three times as they turn the pages. He continues, we've had our share of ups and downs, but we always found our way back to each other, like now. He then recitethanotes, or at least parts of, their wedding vows, to Abigail, who sobs, seemingly moved or possibly feeling a little guilty. Nobody's ever said anything like that to me, she exclaims, then stops herself and adds, that I remember. They almost kiss. Only to have Julie's call about Charlotte's illness cut you off. Abigail tells Chad that she was a very fortunate woman and thanks him for bringing the photo album before he leaves. He is adamant, saying, I was the lucky one and I still am. Abigail gasps the moment he leaves, obviously overtaken with emotion. Steve tells Kayla he finds it hard to believe Abigail lied to him, saying she was on the phone with his wife, who subsequently denied having spoken to him. Kayla claims that it might have been an easy mistake, but she is aware that her husband doesn't think so. It appeared as though she was hiding, he remarks, before delving into hypothetical A. Abigail's possible justification for lying. Kayla advises him to just acknowledge that he doesn't believe Abigail to be Abigail. Steve informs Kayla that he saw Abigail discussing her brother with Stefano's portrait. Steve informs Sweetness that numerous DNA tests have been tampered with in Salem over the years when she brings up the test. Steve begs his wife to perform additional DNA testing and discusses all of his other problems, including the face surgery that Abigail underwent. She declines, citing a breach of her HIPAA oath. Stephen Earl Johnson tries to win her over with tender words, but she snaps, saying, Don't you a sweetness me, she responds, he's just going to have to figure out another way to get the answers he needs. 
Steve determines that finding Clyde and speaking with him will be the best line of action. Kayla observes, getting mixed up with Clyde Weston never comes with good results. Furthermore, why do you think he'll tell you the truth in any case, Steve claims that if he doesn't, he'll finish what Chad started. Kayla finds it offensive that he would discuss killing someone. In addition, she questions how Steve will enter the maximum security facility where Clyde is being held. He apologizes and asks, have we met? Because there is a way where there is a will. Maggie asks Sarah how her meeting with Marlena went when she sees her sitting in the living room. Sarah says, it was kind of a bust, adding that she was unable to recall seeing Brady behind the wheel under hypnosis. Conversation shifts to their worries regarding Xander. Xander, brandishing a bat, is urged by Fiona not to smash Brady's head. Xander's mother says she has a confession to make as he prepares to do his absolute worst. Xander raises the bat once more, don't worry, mom, I'm not going to kill him. I'm just going to treat him the same way he treated Sarah, she blurts out, desperate to stop her kid from acting like a caveman, Brady and I slept together. When Fiona brings up the topic of the men's underwear he saw in her hotel room, Xander becomes stopped in his tracks and questions why she would say anything so filthy. I'm very sure he wishes they had never had that talk again. And although Fiona undoubtedly thought that in some way this would help, as you can see in the picture below, it had the exact opposite effect, with Xander lunging at his mother's lover in secret. What is this? I shot your mom, so you shag mine, a vengeful Xander demands, both Brady and Fiona acknowledged that when they slept together, they were unaware of their common bond. When Fiona accidentally says, the first time, Xander notices right away and inquires as to how frequently it occurred. As unpleasant situations seem to be reaching a breaking point, Xander inquires as to whether his mother fell off the wagon and landed on this jackass. Saying he was the only one who drank, Brady lies. Xander hopes Fiona hasn't become attached to Brady as she defends him. In the end, Xander asserts that Brady can never do or say anything to mend their relationship. Brady is then told to, to get the hell out of my building, you're fired, by him. Alex shows up at Stephanie's door to apologize for missing the Everett memorial that she had organized. Alex comforts Stephanie that she will find love again and that what happened wasn't her fault. Stephanie laments that she couldn't assist Everett. No biggie, she continues, asking whether he wants a drink or has lines to memorize for body and soul or push-ups to do or something. You're successful, intelligent, and gorgeous, he remarks. The full package is you. Any guy would be insane not to want to be with you, he says, drawing her into an embrace that soon develops into a passionate kiss. Reversing course, Alex says he's still not over Teresa and that Steph is in grief. Nothing he does will put their friendship in danger. The old Alex would have leaped into bed without a second thought, so she believes this only goes to show how much he's changed since moving to this place. They make the decision to watch Ted and place a food order. Ted, why? In order for Stephanie to declare, I'm so happy I subscribe to Peacock. They have a few amusing items, she claims to have required this. You required a boisterous, stoner teddy bear? He claims he needed it too, though, and he understands what she actually meant. Xander kisses Sarah as he enters the mansion in the last minutes. Her initial query? How come you own a bat? He tells her about his altercation with Brady and how his mother intervened by admitting she had been having an affair with him. Brady and Fiona express their gratitude to each other in the meantime, she for saving his life, and he for keeping her fall off the wagon a secret. Fiona informs Brady that they shouldn't interact with one other any longer before departing. Abigail, on the other hand, sits and flips through the photo album before telling herself, I can't do this anymore, she gets a text message right then. Why haven't you gotten Chad back down the aisle yet, is what it says. 
You are aware of the consequences if you fail to comply. Your friend, Clyde, is signed on it. Next on Days of Our Lives, Rafe might be recalling when Stefan gives Paulina what she needs. On Days of Our Lives, Eric Martsolf dissects Xander's jaw-dropping attack scene. It was to be expected that Paul Telfer's use of a bat was intense. Xander chose to punish Brady on Days of Our Lives because he was furious that a hit-and-run motorist had left Sarah disabled. He threatened his cousin with a bat, but happily Fiona intervened to prevent him from committing a terrible error. Eric Martsolf discussed the process of creating those sequences and how Paul Telfer and him needed to exercise caution to prevent any injuries. A tense circumstance. Fiona, Xander's mother, set up Brady for the accident that rendered Sarah comatose. He threatened Brady with a bat that was intended for his daughter's first birthday piñata. This involved destroying a few set pieces and swinging it around menacingly. It was an explosive scene, to be sure, but Martsolf told Soap Opera Digest that his character didn't beg for forgiveness or try to fight back. Instead, he just stood there and said, go ahead, do it. You could take out pretty much everything in there, he said, adding that the prop crew wasn't sure what furniture Telfer would shatter in the basic black office. There was hence extreme caution. The real bat. Martsolf said they had to move carefully so nobody got wounded since Telfer was swinging the bat around. We take great care with those kind of dangerous situations, he clarified, adding that there was no plastic bat present. He believed Telfer could have destroyed every object on the set since it was the real deal. Luckily, the object of Xander's fury was limited to office furniture. Despite the seriousness of the situation, the two actors chuckled about the sequence after it was cut. They worked with a choreographer to make sure that nobody was seriously wounded, even though there was no physical altercation. Two-week recap of Days of Our Lives, Fiona learns the truth and Connie's crime spree comes to an end. These days, it's all about the bad guys. The downfall of the Salem villains is hinted to in days of our live spoilers for the two weeks of September 16th to September 27th, 2024. Veracity or Repercussions In Salem, everything is building to a pivotal moment, beginning with Fiona's secret. Sarah eventually acknowledged she had a confession to make after Fiona saw her lying about what happened the night of her accident and realized she knew more about it than she had let on. Holly, meanwhile, has promised to ensure that at least one hit-and-run offender is held accountable for his crime and has offered to provide EJ with Brady's evidence after discovering the heartbreaking truth about what Eric did to her father. Just in time for Connie to silence all of her victims, Rafe wakes up. If Rafe remembers specifics of his stabbing, the entire revenge scheme against Gabby and Melinda, who is still being held captive in her apartment, may come to an abrupt end. The reign of terror by Killer Connie may soon come to an end in Salem thanks to Jada's discoveries, as tensions rise at a body and soul picture session and Sarah eventually shares what she remembers. September 16th to 20th, 2024, Week Episode 14945, Monday, September 16th, 2024 Xander learns a startling secret from Fiona Episode 14946, Tuesday is September 17, 2024. Jada and Rafe have a hazy recollection in common. Episode 14947, Wednesday is September 18, 2024. Jada discovers something in Connie's bed that astounds her. Episode 14948, Thursday is September 19, 2024. Abigail and Mark handle a threat. Steve presses Clyde for an answer. Episode 14949, Friday, September 20, 2024. Connie's last scheme culminates in a dramatic finale. September 23 to 27, 2024. Episode 14950, Monday, September 23, 2024. 
Jada sees how insane Connie really is. Episode 14951 for Tuesday, September 24, 2024. A photo shoot with the new cast of Body and Soul. Episode 14952, Wednesday, is September 25, 2024. Sarah asks Xander to refrain from pursuing Brady. Episode 14953, Thursday, is September 26, 2024. Brady has used drugs. Tate discovers Holly spying. Episode 14954, Friday, is September 27, 2024. What Sarah remembers from the night of the accident is shared with Fiona. With regrets, Fabi is experiencing a few days of our lives on September 16. Clyde isn't going to abandon Salem, is he? In the Monday, September 16 episode of Days of Our Lives, Chad reflected on their history, poor chap with his puppy dog heart eyes that he's plainly showing for Abigail. Furthermore, he performed a portion of his marriage vows in an attempt to elicit a few memories. Sadly, that did not occur. But what it did do was make Babby feel something. She appears to be experiencing emotions already, and it appears that she is already regretting her choices, which are obviously related to Clyde. Why does Clyde have such an obsession with Salem and its people? A journey through time. Chad brought a picture album to the DeMera estate in an attempt to rekindle Abby's and memories. They keep trying, but it seems as though those memories will resurface when they're ready. That didn't deter Thomas's father and Charlotte's. Rather, Chad recounted their three marriages to his ex-wife before saying one of his vows to her. Fabi's emotionless heart was touched by every phrase, to the extent that it was evident she felt something. Nope, she was powerless against Chad's allure. And we most certainly. Fabi danced, bobbed, and weaved her way around the lies she had been speaking before these poignant times. She acknowledged that she had lied to Stephanie and that Steve had doubts. Whether or not Fabi has a DNA test, Chad should also let this doubtful flag fly, but he is too preoccupied with Fabi's attractiveness, her good humor, and his happiness at having his wife back. When it became necessary to set up a few walls, he already let his guard down. Chad, take care of yourself. Clyde Schmide. When will Clyde turn around and leave Salem behind? After all, he usually ends up in jail at the conclusion of his stints. He just can't seem to give it up. To con Chad and his family, he dispatched Mark and Fabby. He must desire the DeMera money as payback and as a means of assisting in his release from captivity. His network appears to be as broad behind maximum security bars as it was during his time running a full-scale narcotics enterprise out of Statesville. How does he create this network, first of all? How come these folks want to collaborate with him? Does he reimburse them, or what? Since there's no beating his connections. Secondly, are Fabi and Mark his offspring? Or another family that he can influence? Since they are following his agenda. Really, how much will it take to get rid of that annoying Clyde Weston in Salem? Hopefully, Steve's doubts and curiosity will assist accomplish the task. He was foolish, though, to even consider the possibility that Kayla would do a covert DNA test without Fabi's approval. To get Clyde out of his hair and out of the company, Steve will definitely need to go outside the box. How do you feel about Fabi and Chad? What if Fiona just admitted to having slept with Brady? In the end, did Sarah recall Fiona, or was the hypnosis session a failure? September 17 Spoilers for Days of Our Lives, Connie Worries About Rafe's Memories Stefan and Gabby intend to ruin one another. The teasers for Tuesday, September 17th episode of Days of Our Lives give us hope that Rafe will recall what happened when he was stabbed by an open grave. Conversely, Connie sincerely wishes the contrary. Consider carefully. Rafe is awake. Hooray. Gabby is content. 
Jada is content. Paulina is content. She wants Rafe to remember who stabbed him as soon as possible, now that her command for him to wake up has been successful. It's unclear how she anticipates him accomplishing it. His back was to the assailant. She remained silent. What then is he expected to recall? It is irrelevant. Paulina gave him the command. And no one defies a Paulina command. Speak with. With regards to the Stabie, Connie was having a great time chit-chatting with her cardboard cut out of Lee. She could even hear him responding. However, now that she has Melinda as her captive audience, handcuffs and a joke, after all, would make anyone listen intently, Connie is discovering that there is a benefit to conversing with someone who isn't simply a paranormal figure. She is eager to share her most recent idea with Melinda. Every story has two sides. Stefan and Gabby are frantically trying to hurt one other now that they have made the decision to despise one another. Stefan approaches the situation by giving Paulina some insider knowledge that is sure to agitate Gabby. Gabby offers EJ a tip on how to make Stefan unhappy in the interim. One would be tempted to believe that they aren't as over the other as they'd like to convince the world, and each other, that they don't detest one other as much as they profess, given how much time they spend thinking about each other. For more of the latest updates and behind-the-scenes secrets from Days of Our Lives, make sure to hit subscribe and ring that bell. Stay in the know with every new release.